now we're checking out a game called Pollen, which, which is an Oculus Rift, which I guess you play a bee of some sort. I don't know, but I've never used the Oculus before. I haven't either. So I, I want to check it out, though, because so I, I keep hearing good things about it, so let's find out. We're going to see how this one go, goes up, if we can get a table. So we'll see. Bye. Hi, guys. We're This is doing budget interviews right now. So uh, we are here with... Jujo Yako. Jujo Yako, and we, this is her game called Pollen, which is an Oculus Rift game. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the game is about? Yes, so Pollen is a first person uh, adventure exploration game. Uh, it's actually set on a space station. Um, you, as a player, are essentially a reserve employee. Uh, the previous uh, crew members of the space station have mysteriously disappeared, and your uh, task is to find out why. And okay. Where they gone. For a second there, from the logo, I noticed, I, first, I thought for sure I was going to play a B for a second. I thought that was good. <laughs> you were not the first, but not the last. Really? Like, how, yeah. many, how many people thought you were playing Bs in this game? <laughs> That's one mystery that I can interpret. You're not a B. You're oh, you're not, not a B. a B. Okay, not cool. You heard it here first. This is a worldwide yeah, exclusive. Yeah. All right. Now, you're a lot of disappointed, huh? I know. I was like, oh man, I want to play with pollen. I want I want to play with the flowers. All right. All right. But uh, so you're more of the voice actors in the game, right? I am indeed. So yes, who did you so play, or can you not say? Uh, I, I can't say who, um, uh, but it's actually going to be one of the main characters, one of the main voices that you will hear on, on the audio tapes that are kind of scattered around the environment. All right. Uh, and you like, might recognize it. You see. <laughs> all right. All right. Sounds good. Cool. Yeah. Now, uh, Oculus is a big thing that's kind of uh, up and coming right now. now that's right. Uh, I just want your personal opinion on like, how much do you think it's going to appeal to a widespread consumer market? I think just like with any uh, new technology, it's first going to be uh, the tech enthusiasts, you know, the gamers, the early adopters uh, that are going to really get into it. And then depending on, you know, uh, once those people have kind of bought into it, and once there is uh, the market appeal, I think will come with two things. Content, uh, amazing content that developers like you know, ourselves hopefully, and our fellow developers will put out to the market. And when the technology is um, on that level that, you know, um, it's, it's high quality, it runs all the games and all the, the amazing experiences that we can create, which it already, it already does. But, you know, a lot of people, some of the, the game that we are running, for example, we are trying to run it at like a 90 frame per second is, is the ideal experience to have our Oculus game on. And we understand that not everyone necessarily has so one of the one of the things is is, is that will require is that you know the technology kind of catches up and we'll be able to have high end machines and then the content really for it the content is amazing. Um, so I think those two things will make it more mainstream over time. Okay, because this is not the first time we've tried to get virtual reality into the market's hands, yes. and it has not ended well. So yeah. like, what makes the occult different? Uh, Oculus. What, what's it called again? I'm so sorry. Uh, Oculus. Oculus. Yeah, I, was the Oculus I was close. I was close. Yeah, it's the it's Oculus. Different. Different. What makes the Oculus different from what has come before? Right. Well, um, like I mentioned earlier about the technology, so um, the technology is completely different. So, so right I mean, now. It looks fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So, so right now, so what? The difference was that back then there was no experience that we could do without uh, getting motion sickness. So, whereas right now the technology actually has caught up with it, and, um, and now we are able to do that. It's more about the technology is, is there. It's more about making sure that uh, more and more people have high-end machines to, to run it, and it's going to get even faster and faster. Um, uh, you know, people are going to get better machines, and, and it's going to be amazing. So, so uh, I wouldn't compare the two because really we have come so far uh, as um, uh, as us technology-wise and content-wise uh, content that we, we really can create realistic environments that feel, um, you know, that the people that wanted to, to get uh, virtual reality off the ground back then really wanted to, to feel immersed, but they just weren't able to create the kind of environment where you could really get lost. And now if you play games like Skyrim, you know, uh, or Mass Effect or some of the, you know, uh, um, uh, The Witcher, you can just imagine that you sit there and you're thinking, I could, if I, if I were dropped in this world right now and walk around it, it would feel real. I just need that one more step so I'm actually immersed in the environment around me. And that's what virtual reality okay. will be able to do. Because like one, of the, one of the greatest challenges of getting like anything like virtual reality off the ground is just trying to match the visuals, match like the actual sensation of experiencing what's going on around right. you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. the controllers already do a great deal with that array with the vibration control. That's why those things exist exactly. to begin with. Yeah, so exactly. do you think uh, with the controller vibration matched with the Oculus visuals that could help kind of simulate that effect? Absolutely, absolutely. Every little thing that we can do to recreate the experience of, the, of, of feedback that you get in real life, whether it be visual, audio, touch, 
sense of smell, you know, all these things are evidence. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. way down but, the line. <laughs> there'll, be, there'll be, you know, steps, uh, like all, all the, all the, all the, uh, the sensory inputs. Like, we don't want, we are going to be able to touch on all the different sensory inputs that we are, as we are, uh, humans are experiencing the world around right now. It's going to get even more real and real and real. And as far as we tackle visuals, now we have, uh, audio is very big and in VR, so you don't know, make like, this is the audio. Uh, and then next thing is going to be with the controller, so like visual, like, sort of, like, uh, Going back to your game a little bit. Yes. Now, is your game only on PC or are the like, big gaming hardware is going to get on this? Right, too? so, so we're, it's PC first and then we're going to, uh, uh, it's going to come to Mac and Linux as well. And uh, it's going to be optimized for the Oculus Rift. So, what that means is that you can play the PC version as well without the Oculus. Mm -hmm. It's totally fine. Uh, but uh, we made, we designed the game right. with uh, virtual reality in mind. So, okay. basically, make it as interactive as possible, uh, really put um, uh, a lot into, into the motion controls and how you can. I think that's all the questions I have, so thank you very much for your right, time, no and can't wait to play a demo. Yeah, right. and please check it out. Uh, you can check out the game, uh, game trailer, and sign up on pollengame.com. All right, you heard her, guys, pollengame.com. Check it out, everyone. All, all right, right. thank you very much. Thank you. Right. <laughs>